are visiting with the uh, head coach of the UNLV Skating Rebels, Anthony Vigneri Greener. Anthony, welcome to the show again. Thanks for having me. Anthony, let's talk a little bit first of all about the uh, the last month or so. Let's talk about that trip you guys took up to Utah and played the Beehive and the success that you guys had up there. Uh, well, the record speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, we had a really good time, uh, good time up there. Four wins. That's what we were uh, set out to do. I told the boys, um, you know, believe in our systems just like we have all year. It doesn't matter who we're playing, what number they are, what rank they are. We're the best team going to this tournament. And it showed. They had a great week of practice. We went up there and... Uh, I felt like everybody was clicking, everybody was having a good time, the boys were having fun, laughing, you know. And uh, with that, all the positive vibes came back with four wins and four huge wins. Yeah, you guys scored a lot of goals up there, so offensively you were in good shape and, and you didn't allow many, so it, I guess it's the, the best end of both spectrums, right? Yeah, uh, we moved the puck unbelievable. I mean, the best that I've seen my squad um, move the puck. Blue especially, my blue line, um, they moved the puck. It looked like they were playing uh, men versus boys out there sometimes. So. They did a really good job. The power play looked good. Our penalty kill was going. So everything was clicking at the right time. Is there anybody that stood out that maybe you weren't expecting to stand out on this trip? Or was it pretty much across the board? Everybody played pretty well. Uh, for the most part, it was hands down. You know, everybody stepped up. I've seen a different level. Uh, one of our players that I expect more out of him, he hasn't really produced a lot this year. But Mitchell Providence, he had a great weekend. He's really like a... He's just a, a role player, knows what he's doing, and uh, it showed. I'm, I'm glad it, he's finally coming out of uh, his shell because I know what he can do. I've had him for a long time. So, so I to talked see. to you guys uh, when you were down in Tucson, had a chance to play the U of A, the, the D1 team down there, and then you came back in a week of practice and up to Beehive, right? Yeah. How did that, uh, did that have any effect on you guys at all, getting a chance to play that, that program down there or not really? No, yeah, definitely. It put us on the map again, you know, we're all on a high horse. I just think we didn't play well, we didn't execute our systems uh, well. It just wasn't a good two. We couldn't put together a 60-minute game. So um, for the most part, you know, it was kind of an upsetting trip, but, you know, we put that behind us, and we knew we had four huge games in our uh, region, and we had a great week of practice. We got on the bus, had a you know, little few bus breakdowns. So we did our, <laughs> What would be a road trip without that, yeah, right? We, we did our film in Carlos Jr., uh, <laughs> in the middle of uh, Beaver or wherever we were, and it was just it was a weird trip, but it, it ended great. So tell me how, how that is for guys to play four day, four games in four days like that. Is there something they mentally have to do to get ready for something like that, or is it something that, you know what, the games are there, they're on the schedule, just play them? No, we, uh, we changed our practice schedule around. Normally we really go hard on Tuesdays and battle, and just that's our practice is battle drills. Um, we skated Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that morning, then left right away. So we changed our practice up a bit. Um, and then in games where we got a lead, you know, I didn't play our top lines as much. And our top set of D pair, they didn't play as much. And it was kind of just use them where we could and eat minutes when we could. And we did a really good job. Nick did a good job with the D. And, and just overall, I felt like we, we utilized our team to the best. So building on that, 16-3 and three coming into this weekend now with, with NAU here, Probably the toughest opponent you're gonna play uh, at this point. Yeah, 100. percent They got a good team over there. Um, we watched a lot of film on them. They moved the puck well. Their top two lines are fairly good. They, like I said, they moved the puck really uh, good down low. They're really good on the penalty kill. Really aggressive. So uh, it's gonna be a gritty game, but definitely it's number one versus two, and uh, we'll see who uh, comes out on top at the end of this. <laughs> so you guys had some really good news this week talking about the program as a whole. Getting the opportunity to uh, get accepted to advance to ACHA D1. How important is that to uh, not only the program right now, but the program for the future? It's huge. Like, uh, you know, we were talking earlier, and you just said it would happen this quick. A couple years ago, when we first started, I would say, uh, you know, it's kind of far fetched, but it's really good for the whole program, the city, with the, the NHL team coming at the right time and us moving up. Um, now our recruiting class is going to get that much better. So, um, and we're not just playing in the ACHA to just be uh, an average team in the ACHA D1. So hopefully we come out right away and uh, make our presence felt. Tell me what the difference is for, for the lay people out there. What's the difference between D2 and D1? I would say depth, as I'm going to go back to that. Uh, ACHA D1 team has um, 25 kids, right. and I'd say 20 of the kids are probably all the same skill level high skill level, come from a good background of hockey. We're in ACHA D2. For the most part, the top teams in any division, any region, 
top six forwards are going to be really good, and then the bottom six forwards, you know, you kind of feel. That's why I feel like our team this year, we're doing so good. I think our depth is good. Our third line plays just as much as our second and first line. Our fourth line is really good at special teams, and everybody's found a role that they're playing in. So this week's been pretty pretty popular for guys. You've been all over the place with the media coverage and such. What's What's been the, uh, the word on the street, if you will, in Vegas about... You guys going to D1, is it something people are excited about? Oh yeah, I definitely, uh, I was was telling my wife I woke up from a nap after it all came out. We did some interviews in the morning after our skate and for the news and I woke up and there was 78 text messages. And I mean, it was people I haven't talked to in 10 years and it was people I talked to yesterday, you know, the day before. So it's just great for the program. It's going to put UNLV really on the map and, you know, I'm really excited to see our staff's done already, Z, Nick, they've all done a really good job, so. So where you're at right now, um, obviously you want to finish up this year and, and you'd like to win that D2 title, I'm sure, and then uh, take the next step. Is there any apprehension at any point that the guys might start to look ahead just a little bit or are they pretty much focused on getting this thing done at this level? No, uh, that's our main goal right now. That was our goal from day one because um, D1 wasn't promised. So with us working towards our goal each and every week in practice, you know, we got to get one game at a time. This is a huge weekend. If we can grab four points here and really gap us away from the second team and just get that auto build the nationals and then we'll see you know from there we'll go from there so after this season's complete what's the next step in the process for going to d1 the recruiting process or, or are there other things that you guys need to fulfill scott honestly that started uh, <laughs> probably about a month ago just today i was talking to the quinn manager and i was on the phone for probably two hours today just kids from all over call or i've called them and, and it's already started so um over Christmas break, I'll get a good chunk of it. Nick and I will go off to uh, Boston, go to the uh, showcase in Boston right on the first of the year, try to snag some kids from there, and then finish the year, win a national championship, hopefully, and then uh, it starts again. Just more showcases and phone calls, emails, and, and that's where you uh, where we're going to get our recruiting classes right there, put in the hard work. Awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Good luck this weekend. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.